Hi, this is Bruce coming at you from the Groxio Labs. I've got the dog on the floor. I'm recording and as usual, Maggie's going to be doing the editing for us. It's a family affair here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the exorcism. That's E-X-E-R-C-I-S-M pony track. And these are exercises that help you basically get started with a new language. And the pony language has a couple of quirks that makes exorcism a little bit different. So the first one is that using the actor model and some of the syntax sugar, the structure of the programs isn't exactly what you'd expect it to be. And the second is that the testing structure is a little bit different with the pony tool, meaning that you have to compile everything and there are a couple of different little, little interesting tidbits that make the, the test a, a little bit tricky to, to diagnose. And in general, there are a couple of uh, rough places in the language that tend to be right in the middle of problems that exorcism likes you to solve. So today we're gonna look at few. We'll start with an easy problem, um, the, the Bob problem, and then we'll shift to another easy problem, the leap year problem. And with those, we hope that you'll get the feel of the overall piece. And then we'll move on to the last one, the hamming problem, which ought to give us a good look at how iterators and the iterator tools work. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start this off with Bob, because what could be more fun than our surly teenager? So when you download the problem and load it into your editor, you're gonna see something that looks like this. This is the test case. And the way that Pony test cases are structured is that they come in, everything comes in through main. And that's a little bit unusual in terms of exorcism test structure. Ruby, for example, has its own test file and Elixir has its own test directory. And you'd run mixed test to run that with, with Pony, you're actually just going to embed the tests in the main, like we've done here, and you're going to just build the functions in a thing called, in a function called tests. So these are the individual tests. And for example, Bob shout is this one right here. So the first thing to do is to look for the API. And in this case, the syntax looks like this and that might look strange to you if you're not a pony expert because there's no real function here but what's happening is bob is calling calling a function called apply and with bob's syntactic sugar we can ignore the function name of apply so we're going to go ahead and create a new file with a new class and bob.pony, so we're gonna say class, and this is Bob, and we're gonna have a new function called apply. And I think that what we saw is that we took a string, which is uh, some kind of statement, and we returned a string, and pony has ref caps or reference capabilities right here, and the default one for string is val, so we're not gonna type that. We're just gonna go ahead and start working on our function. Okay, let's compile this. Okay, what's it telling us? Okay, yes, it's telling us that the body isn't the result type. So that says we're supposed to turn a string. Looks like we're returning a string. Oh, yep. Look, so this if statement can also have an else condition that might not be true. And if it's not true, we're going to return a none. And let's see if that's showing up. Yes, so Pony is telling us we're not generating a none. So probably it's a good time to look at our test case and see if there is some type of default. So let's see. So there's a shout response for all these. And there's a question response and there's a silent response and there's a default response. Up oh, the default response is whatever. So let's grab that and we'll use whatever right there. And let's see if this much compiles. Uh, 
Okay, so let's see if we're detecting shouts where we're supposed to. So I can just run the program. Remember that Pony is putting this test case in main, which is a little different than you might be used to. Oh, we have a passing test, which is exciting. So I think that we'll find that our shout test passed. So let's look up here. Passed. So passed, uh, whatever, yeah. We'll chill out, we'll chill out, be that way. Yep, it looks like our test, our first test passed, which is great. So we're on our way. Now let's look at the test and see what the next thing that we should conquer is. And that is the question test. So question uh, looks like the input is going to be something that ends with a question mark. So let's think about how we would go about implementing that. All right, let's go ahead and implement the next one down. But looking at this API, I'd rather that lead, uh, that read if shouting. So I'm going to change that. And then I can shape the other ones the same way. I like that better. So function asking. And this is going to take a statement that's also a string. And that's going to return a Boolean. And so Pony is going to be pretty picky about requiring you to specify the return type of these functions, which I think is helpful. So the first thing that we need to do is define a length. And we're going to define our length as a statement dot size. And then we're going to say um, statement dot at. And then at, we're going to specify length minus one, and then a question mark. And I'm not sure if I've got that right or not, but Pony will complain if I don't. So let's compile this much. Okay, so let's see. So it's telling us that this is wrong, and it's wrong because we're expecting uh, so statement dot at so we're actually expecting a string and an offset so we're backwards are we backwards so the offset is an i size there you go okay so and we're backwards so that's a string and this has got to be an i size and it's not so let's convert it to one Let's see if Pony likes that a little better. And it does. So we're going to plug in the next piece of this. If, else, if. So asking statement. And then we're going to leave the else in place as our default. And if it's asking, what did Bob want me to do? Bob said it wants the question response, and the question response is sure. Man, I need one of these teenagers. Okay, and so now we can run it. Got to compile first, though. This should compile fine. So. Okay, so oh, looks like we got what happened here. So we ran the first one and that was successful. And then the second one, we have an assertion that failed on line 32. So let's see what's going on here. So the test on line 32, ah, look, it asks a question of, for, with four. So we can solve this a couple of ways. One of the ways is, so if Bob is shouting and it's a question, we still want it to, to be shouting, but this is going to be a false trigger for me uh, because we're going to return true for shouting. So we need to fix our shouting in order for, for these first couple of tests to pass. So how do we do that? So I think we're going to do an and 
and then we're going to take this and then we're going to say lower so if the lower is not the same as is so if if the lower is not the same as the statement and the upper is the same as a statement that's the same way as saying that the statement has uppercase letters and all of the letters are uppercase so I think that this will do what we want and let's try and see we're gonna compile and we're gonna run okay so we're getting pretty close so it looks like three of the tests ran and and um, the fourth one didn't so the fourth one what's happening so we need to detect silence so let's go ahead and get that started in the next segment okay so let's take a last one last look at our tests we are looking we are looking for this is this is the default response and we've already coded that so that's okay this is probably the one that's breaking so if i have silence then this is going to break also if i have something with white space this is going to break so we're going to need a sanitation method called strip and what's interesting about this function is that strip is going to is it's going to actually mutate in place the um, the command that we're looking at and so we're going to use one of the features that i talked about in the in intro called reference capabilities in fact we're going to need to create something with the capability that lets it be modified and that's a ref or a reference or i could also use an iso but we'll go ahead and use a reference so i'm going to create a function called silent so silent statement this sets a string it's going to return a bool and the first thing that i'm going to need is i'm going to have to create a variable this is a var because I'm going to mutate it, right? So that's a string and it's a ref because I'm going to mutate that. And I'm going to assign that to statement.clone. Let's see if that much compiles. I'm just going to return true here. Let's see if that much compiles. yes so it likes this pretty well so far and so now i think all i have to do is say i uh, have to say strip is stripped <laughs> dot strip i knew i'd get there so and then i'm gonna have to compare Stripped is equal to an empty string. So let's take a look at that and see if Pony likes it and then see if we like it. Okay, it looks like Pony likes that fine. I'm just curious, is this going to allow us to do a little bit of chaining here? I don't see why not. Let's see if Pony sees why not. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Uh, okay, yeah, so that's a reference capabilities thing. So we're going to go ahead and um, and do this. Yeah, it looks like Pony likes that fine. And I could say, what, is Pony, what does Bob say? If it's a silent statement, Now I'm gonna have to find out from my test. So we'll check this out. So it's a fine be that way. That sounds more like a teenager. Okay, so Pony C. And then we can run this. And all of my tests pass. So we have a working Bob. 
And so the lessons that we've learned, the first thing that we did is that we, we so the test goes in the main actor. So we're kind of inverted and and our module goes here. But if you think about it, most of what we're doing is implementing uh, packages and things like that in Pony. So that that strikes me as just fine. And so the second thing that we did is recall that our test had this API and you didn't see a function that is sugar for the apply function. And the third thing that we looked at is since in asking, or no, since in silent, this strip command makes me mutate stripped, I need a different reference capability, right? So this is no longer a let, which means that it's immutable. It's a variable, which means that we're going to mutate it. And we're also going to change in place that string. And so that takes a reference capability, which is specified after the, uh, the type. And if you want to know more about reference capabilities, there's a whole section of it in the um, in the Pony 2. And you still have just a little while. You have until January 15th to subscribe. And who knows, we might make these lessons available independently after that, probably for 40 or 50 bucks or something like that. OK, so that's Bob. Now we can move on to another couple of interesting problems. Okay, the next program that we're going to work on is Leap Year, and it uses a couple of the same things. So there's, we don't have to worry about ref caps at all with this. We're basically creating a Leap Year. And so all we're going to do is use really just a couple of, of Pony's uh, operators. And I want to show you a couple of lessons uh, with Pony along the way. So the rule for a Leap Year is a Leap Year is divisible by six unless it's divisible by 100. And even then, if it's divisible by 400, it is a leap year. So if it's divisible by 400, it is. But if it's divisible by 100, but not 400, it's not. And if it's divisible by 4 and not divisible by 100, it's a leap year. So let's go ahead and code those rules. And remember, we're going to code that in a file called leap and in a function called apply. So let's go ahead and create that now. We're going to create a new file. That's leap.pony. And this is going to be really straightforward. So I'm going to create a class called leap and a function called apply. And that's going to take a, a year and it's going to return a boolean. What type is that year? Let's check out the test. So the test doesn't tell me. Um, that's fairly big. Uh, what about a U32 or a U64? Let's try a U64. Let's see if we can make that work. So if year. So the first thing we're going to do is modular division. So modular division is with a percent. So I could say if year, and this is basically going to leave the remainder um, when we're doing division of integers. So if the year divided by what? Uh, 400 is divisible by 400. So that's your work. And then otherwise, if the year is divisible by 100, then no. And otherwise, it's it, we need to know if the year divided by 4 Okay, this is not going to compile because, interesting enough, Pony doesn't have order of operators for these kinds of statements, right? So we say Pony C. This should choke. Yeah, let's see. 
syntax error uh, here. Hmm, not seeing that one. Let's see if this helps me. Let's see if there's something else in there. So I'm saying expected then, oh, okay. Else, so else if, oh, there's a if right there. That's my problem. All right. Okay. okay, yes, it's telling us operator precedence is not um, supported, so we need to use parentheses. So let's do that now. We're just going to highlight these and put them in parentheses. And then I can save that much and see if this compiles. And then run the file. Uh, looks like we're running fine. So that's it for this one. And as you see, we use the same structure as before. We would create a class. It's not the main because the test runs in the main. It has an apply. And the applies, apply is how you get this syntax right here. The other lesson that we learned in this one is that there's no order of operations. So um, pay attention to that with the exorcism problems. We're going to learn look at one more really quick one, and it's going to let us use um, iteration tools, which are very helpful if you're used to thinking in a functional language. This is the last of the exorcism videos. We're going to look at the Hamming problem. And basically, if I have a string like this and a string like this, I'm basically going to zip them together and then count the ones that are not the same. So in this one, I have GGA, GGA, CTGA, CTGA. So this is the same as this. So the Hamming distance is zero. And every character that's zero, so A and G um, are different by one character, and A and G are is different with two with two characters to C and T. Um, and another one is that we need to make sure that there's that we return an error in, um, if the sizes aren't the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this part of the problem and then we're going to use some iteration tools to solve the other part of the problem. So um, let's go ahead and see how many that we can make pass at once. So if we return a Hamming distance of one, that gives us one, two, three, four tests. And then an, if we return an error appropriately, that's going to give us a couple of tests. And this question mark means that this is a partial, which means that this is some code that can return an error. And the way that we're going to specify that is we're going to specify a question mark after we create our um, function. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and create our, our file. By now, you know that we're going to do hamming dot or hamming distance dot pony. So a new file, and this is hamming distance.pony. And this is hamming distance. And, and the apply is going to take two strings. So DNA1 is a string. And DNA2 is a string. And that's going to return a what? Let's see. So it's going to return. Oh, it doesn't really matter. So we can return um, like a U size or something like that. Let's go ahead and try that. Let's say U size. But since we can return an error, I need to be able to do that. So, and then we do the work. And so I'll say if DNA one dot size is not the same is, or let's say if it is the same as DNA two dot size, and these both have 
open and close. Um, so if if they're not the same, then I want it to return an error right here. And if they are the same, just to get as many tests hitting at once, I'm going to just return a one. So let's see if this works. Okay. Unexpected to token after type interface. Okay. So I'm going to say that this is, this is like, uh, an error can't be raised here. So the signature is not marked as a partial. So, um, so I don't know exactly how to do this. Let's try that. Yeah, that looks like it's got it. So basically when you call the, when I call this, I'm gonna call apply with, with uh, string one and string two. Then I have to have a question mark and this tells Pony that uh, this this function might have an error in it so i need to catch everything in um in some type of a, a of a block so that's going to have to be um actually executed in an imply block and so the place to do it in the function signature itself is after the return type or if you're returning none um the the question mark could just go right there like that okay so the next the next part of the problem is the fun part. We're going to use some iteration tools to um, to solve this problem. And once we do, this is going to remind you of a lot of a functional language, except we're going to be working with functions that work on the iterator tool set. So this is a really straightforward problem if I'm working in a language like Elixir or um, another functional language like F sharp or Haskell. Basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take two lists together. I'm going to say, um, say for example, to, to split a string into characters, I just use a, a string dot split. Well, let's use pseudocode. So I would start, start with DNA one and just to zip it up with DNA two. And, and this pipe operator basically takes this and moves it here, right? So I'm basically feeding the thing before into the next function. And then once I have it zipped, I wanna filter the ones that are the same, right? So, and some function in there that says the, um, the tuple elements are the same. And then I'm going to count um, everything that's that's left or not the same. This is uh, so filter out the ones that are not the same. So this is the structure of my program. So with Pony, I'm I'm not so lucky, but you're going to see that if I use um, a library called Iter Tools. which are based on Python's iterator tools, we're going to get a behavior very much like this, right? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna say um, DNA, so I'm gonna get an iterator, an iterator over, over um, what, U8, because once I split the thing, once I split the character, it's going to create these. And to make that iterator, I'm going to say dna1.runes, right? So these are the individual character characters. And then I'm going to zip those up. But I'm going to use the I'm going to use generics to say that I'm zipping up with another um, with another U8 function. And then I'm going to take dna2. Runs, right and then I'm going to filter and filter is going to take a function here and the function is where I'm going to trip up we'll go ahead and give it a try so the function is going to be um, 
the signature, hash rocket, and the value. And so the value is going to be the pair. So I'm going to take a pair. And the pair is of type U8, U8. That's a tuple, right? So I'm going to say the pair 1 is not the same as the pair the second position there. Let's see, is that right? So this says I'm a function. I take a pair. Yeah, I think that's right. And so then I'm going to say that looks right. And then I'm going to count. Um, and I think that I'm going to be counting bools. But let's see if I can just count those and see if that's um, going to work for me. And so um, let's try to compile what we got. And then we'll clean up the mess when this falls on the floor. OK, let's see. U32 is not a subtype of U8. So this says to me that our runes everywhere are U32s and that this pair is going to be U32s also. Let's see if we can clean up this mess now. Holy cow, I might have gotten lucky. So let's try, um, let's try this out. And all of our tests pass. That's pretty amazing. So the cool thing about it is that we were able to take an iterator, which normally is um, processes things step by step, and work with the iterator with functions instead of working with the iterator with individual elements. And we did that with a package called iterTools. So we looked at three techniques in exorcism, and I hope that you like them. So you got to see three of my favorite exorcism problems. The first one was the Bob problem, and I like that problem because it, it's a whimsical look at programming. It's a lot of fun for the younger people that I work with. And in this particular one, we saw a couple of tricks. The first one was the idea that you can invert control like Pony does with its, with its test library so that the tests actually run inside the main and most of the package stuff is in files that you build yourself. The second technique that we saw was apply, where you can have a, a tightened syntax for one function that's, that's needed um, most of the time. And for Bob's problem, it was just making a statement. And the last piece that you saw was just a tiny bit of information on Pony's reference capabilities, where we had a mutable variable that we had to deal with. Then we looked at the leap year problem. And the interesting piece of that problem was that you got to see that Pony doesn't follow the same rules as other languages. For example, you need to be explicit with your parentheses groupings instead of relying on operator presidents, which removes one source of errors. And the last problem that we looked at was hamming. And I like this problem, especially with Pony, because it shows that we can use the iter tools library which is based on the Python iter tools to allow us to use functions instead of dealing with one-offs, more like a functional language. So we were able to process hamming by zipping two lists together, filtering them, and then counting the results. I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll be back at you soon with the Pony 4 video. We'll talk to you soon.